Hey guys, and welcome to Functional Print Friday. So I'm up here on the balcony on the front of my garage, and I've got a string of Christmas lights plugged into this outlet. And I've got Christmas lights elsewhere on the house too, and I have plugged all of those into those little smart plugs that lets you schedule when the lights get turned on and off, and you can also go in and turn them on and off when you want. The problem is this string plugs into this outlet on the front here, and there's just like a real low overhang roof over this. There's a lot of exposure in this spot. So the other areas, like it was under a porch roof or in some other spot, the, the other lights plugged in where the, there really wasn't like an area that got weather. Uh, this spot really does. In fact, I'm actually surprised even with just this flap open that I don't have any problems this time of year uh, with these lights because uh, any amount of wind sends the rain into the siding and this whole area gets wet. So I'd like to add one of those plugs here. And in fact, let me grab the plug. And this is the plug I'm talking about. This is an HS-103 from TP-Link, I think, anyway. Yeah, model HS-103. No affiliation with, uh, with TP-Link. I picked these up for two reasons. Number one, they were cheap. And number two, there is a Python script available that lets you talk to these guys directly. You do have to provision them first. So they still have to talk to the cloud, at least for initial setup. But once that's done, you can talk to these guys directly uh, via a Python script running in Linux uh, via their IP address. So I'll link, uh, I'll link to that project. I think it's called just called Casa. And I'll link to these guys in the Amazon store as well. So let's get down here and see how we're going to get this guy installed. Okay, so the first thing I'm seeing is this doesn't even fit uh, plugged into this outlet with this door on here. Now that's not such a big deal because we don't really need this door on here if we're gonna come up with some other way to protect this area from the weather. Um, but let me see, kinda looks like it's just clicked in on the corners. It's like uh, that rod going across acts as like a spring. But it looks like it's just clicked in in the center too. All right, so it looks like the easiest thing to do, if you happen to have the same type of outlet and you're trying to get this cover off, is actually just uh, slip both of the ends out, these pieces they click into here, and then slip it free of this piece. Because this, while these unclipped fairly easily, that center one seems to be pressed in there pretty tight. Looks like they, they probably pinched that closed after it's put in. Okay, that fits in there nicely now. So I think what I want to do is try and design like a housing that goes over this, um, but still open at the bottom. I don't want to trap moisture here, and I don't want to trap heat here either. So I'm thinking almost like kind of like a little house for this. And there's a fair, fair amount of room back here behind this trim plate, be, between like this and the siding. So I'm thinking maybe we can kind of hook something uh, that goes like down the side of this and into the top. Yeah, I think the first thing to do is going to be to get really good measurements of everything here because it's really tempting to just start designing for projects like this. But I'm just going to be making a bunch of guesses then as to how much clearance I need for everything. And I also won't really have any idea of kind of how it's going to look in relation to the size of uh, what's here on the wall. So that's what I'm going to do. It's cold out here, so I'm not going to record it, but I think I'm going to go get my calipers and I'm going to get measurements of everything from the gap back here to the, the size of this trim piece to the size of this piece here to uh, how far out the outlet protrudes, how far out this plug is going to protrude, and now that I think about it, even how far out this is going to protrude uh, plugged into it because that whole stack up gets us pretty far away from the house. So, all right, I'm gonna go get those measurements and I'll start designing and I'll bring you guys back. All right, and as planned, once I got all those measurements, the first thing I did was actually draw all the features of the wall 
and you know where this guy is going to plug in first. So you know you can see I didn't draw the the actual slats on the the siding. Uh, the the gap here between this decorative plate and the wall back here represents the uh, the distance between the, the peaks of the siding, so the highest points of the siding and this decorative plate. And I probably could have skipped getting the exact measurements for all the other features here. Uh, that's really the most important one is the, the size of, of, of this back here, as well as that, that depth and then the size to get over top of it and our overall stick out from the wall. But just taking a couple extra minutes to model all that first is so helpful in the rest of the design process. Uh, not only just you know to have all the measurements that you need to work from, but also to get kind of a concept of scale of how big the thing that you're modeling is going to be in comparison to um, you know what you're trying to cover up in this case, just from a visual perspective. So let me go ahead and unhide the design here. And you can see, I, I talked about this kind of being almost like a little house for this. That's sort of what I ended up doing. Um, spent a lot of time thinking about uh, this printing without supports, because this is a fairly large object. I know it doesn't probably doesn't look that big here on the screen, but I think when you see this printed, you're going to realize this guy's pretty big. And what I figure we'll do is we'll print it with, uh, you know, with this face back here. So here, let me hide the, let me actually have the whole wall stack up. Uh, this will be the face that we have down on the bed down here, and then everything will print vertically. Well, that's, again, this is a big object, right? So if we designed this roof part here, this part that is going to give us most of the, you know, the shelter in this, uh, to need supports, not only would it be a lot more material and take a lot more time, but there's also a much higher chance that this print fails. So I really focused on trying to design everything in such a fashion that none of the overhangs were going to be so steep that they would need supports. The other thing I did was I tried to design sort of a gutter into the front here with this little bit of a, of a lip. And let me unhide the wall and I'll kind of show you what I'm thinking. So imagine a scenario now where uh, rain's hitting this, it's running down the front and the wind is blowing. As the water drips off the front of this guy, I'm trying to avoid a scenario where it blows back into uh, the switch and, and the outlet area itself. I'm hoping that what this does is sort of direct the water off to the sides so as the wind blows it, um, you know, again, again, it's it's avoiding this area here. I don't know if the lip's actually big enough. Um, I guess we're probably not going to see until it actually rains. Oh, one more thing I wanted to mention. As far as material goes on this, I'm going to print this guy in PLA. I have had very good experience with PLA outdoors. I've had even better experience with TPU outdoors. And TPU probably would be the best material for this. But I simply don't have time to do it. This print in TPU would take well over... 24 hours uh, to print because you've got to go so slow with with TPU and I dry the filament ahead of time. So realistically, if I did this in TPU, I'd be looking at at least 48 hours till I actually had a part in my hand and that's not going to meet the deadline of getting a video out this Friday. But I've had good luck with PLA outside and I'll talk about that a little bit more in this video. I think I have another video I need to do actually for another print that's been outside for quite some time and it's just plain old PLA. All right, let's print this and see how we did. All right, it is the next day. Our print is done, and I am really impressed with how this came out. Um, I probably could have pushed all these overhangs a lot further, so I printed in this direction like this. So we have this overhang here, this overhang here, and this overhang here, and then the steepest overhang was actually the, uh, the lip here on our sort of gutter on the front, and it all came out super, super clean. So I probably could have pushed that even further and still gotten a really clean print, but let's see how this guy fits. Oh, that fits really well. Uh, if anything, um, it's actually a little bit, that's not loose. It's just that here at the top, this is where the siding kind of goes up for the, the lap. Um, so it does move a little bit. I might add maybe 
It is actually, overall, it's nice and snug, but I might still add maybe like a strip of foam tape back here just to snug that up further. All right, here's a better view of that that you can actually see inside. So it's definitely shading it very well. Let's see how everything stacks up in there. All right, here is our plug. And our Christmas lights. Yeah, that definitely looks well covered. Uh, I guess it's possible. I mean, so our plug is below this height. I didn't want to go down any further with this because I didn't want to, I didn't want to go any steeper in this overhang. So to get lower, if I, like if I was to try and get to the bottom of the plug here, this would have been out, well, it probably would have been out to like around where the knuckle on my thumb is there and keeping that same angle. So I think that's going to be a good compromise. I suppose it's possible to still get wind driven rain in there, but I also don't, th I think this guy will tolerate some moisture. It's just not going to tolerate getting rained on. Um, all the time. So, you know what, speaking of that, let me get my Rain Simulator 5000. All right, guys, I got the Rain Simulator 5000. Let's see if this gutter actually does anything. Yeah, not really. Um, now, I mean, this is a ton of water, but yeah, even a smaller amount of water, it looks like it's still just dripping over that lip. So, I think that was probably a waste of time to put the sort of gutter on it. But I do think overall this is doing a good job uh, directing water away from that outlet. I don't know if I'm going to bother revisiting that front part or not. I think we'd have to get that lip pretty big uh, to actually direct the rainwater off. I mean condensation, like there is, I mean there is water getting stuck behind it. So it's doing something, but I feel like for any real rainfall, yeah, it's just going to run off that lip. So that's unfortunate. I was kind of hoping that we wouldn't have water dripping off that lip for the wind to drive back in there. But I mean, overall, I think that is doing a good job. Yeah, you guys can see up inside there, it is bone dry. The only place I see water is on the bottom edge of this and our cord and we do have there is sort of a loop here in the cord so as water gets on that cord it'll drip off before traveling uh, kind of back uphill here uh, to get on the plug so i'm also really interested to see how this pla holds up out here i have this side of the uh, the building does get a lot of direct sunlight i've got a pla print on the other side of another building here on the property that has been outside for at least five years i'm actually going to do a video on it uh, that is perfect. I mean, there's no visible breakdown in the part at all. This gets a lot more sun, so I am interested to see how this holds up for this season. All right, guys, as always, thanks for hanging out with me this week for this print and design. The STLs for this, if you are interested, will be on fpfdesigns.com, just like everything we cover on this channel, and they will, of course, be free. If this is by chance your first time on the channel, we do a new video every single week, every Friday. It's always a functional print. If you enjoyed this one, hit that like button. If you want to see more of these, hit the subscribe button. Guys, if you do, I'll see you next Friday.